thing to note is that the output VAB is not relative to ground. Okay? Those are two voltages, neither of which are ground. That's going to make a difference in the next stage of our system. In the last lab assignment, we did an inverting voltage amplifier, but what that was amplifying was a voltage that was relative to ground. That particular amplifier will not work to amplify VAB from this circuit. We need to use a different implementation. Now we'll look at the implementation of the Wheatstone bridge that I'm going to be using. I've used VCC to apply 5 volts to this strip here, so I'm applying a 5 volt voltage to this node here. That's my supply voltage on my previous schematic. Here's my resistive divider on one side of the Wheatstone bridge. I'm rather arbitrarily using two 100 ohm resistors. Now on the other side of the bridge, what I'm ultimately going to do is connect my strain gauge between this node and this node. Now since I'm using two 100 ohm resistors here, I'm going to want this resistance to be approximately the 120 ohms that I'm using as my nominal strain gauge resistance. The way I've created that is to put a 100 ohm resistor in series with a 47 ohm resistor. That gives me 147 ohms. Then I've connected a potentiometer across the 47 ohm resistor to reduce that resistance. So depending on where this potentiometer is set, I can vary the resistance between here and here from roughly 100 ohms to 150 ohms. Now let's connect our strain gauge to the Wheatstone bridge and measure the output voltage resulting from the overall circuit. Strain gauge connects between this node and ground. So I'll connect this red wire to one of my strain gauge terminals and the green wire to the other terminal. I'll use the waveform software to apply power to the system. And I am going to use my DMM to measure the voltage between nodes A and B. So I've done some partial balancing of this bridge already. I'm getting about 10 millivolts output in an undeflected state. As I change this deflection, the voltage goes down to about 4 millivolts, 4.5. As I deflect it up, the voltage goes up to about 16 millivolts. So I'm getting about a plus, or min plus to minus 5 millivolt change. Now, in order to get this nominal voltage down, I can adjust the position of my potentiometer. So I'm down to about 5 tenths of a millivolt at the undeflected position. Now what I'll do is just roughly balance this bridge here. Then when I hook up my amplifier circuit, I'll rebalance the bridge because I'll be amplifying this signal quite a bit and I can see the variation better. Okay, to finally provide the sensitivity that we need from the overall system, we're going to use what is called a difference amplifier. This amplifier circuit is shown on this slide. What this guy does is takes the difference between the voltage at B and the voltage at A and amplifies that. Now we're going to use a specific configuration of this in which the ratio of R1 to R2 is the same as the ratio of R3 to R4. If you do that, the output voltage is equal to R2 over R1 times the difference between VB and VA. So by picking R1 and R2 appropriately, we can amplify the voltage difference between nodes B and A. Then we just have to use the line above that to set R3 and R4 to give me the correct ratio between R1 and R2 being the same as R3 and R4. Now please note that this works for the Wheatstone bridge because both input voltages are relative to ground. You're amplifying a voltage difference between two voltages that are neither of which are at ground. Now let's look at the implementation of our difference amplifier. This is the appropriate section of our circuit. These two resistors are R1 and R3. This resistor and this resistor are R2 and R4. I've decided rather arbitrarily that I want a gain of 100 
on this amplifier so that my 50 millivolt change is going to turn into a half of a volt change at the output. I've chosen approximately 2 kilo ohms for R1 and R3 and approximately 200 kilo ohms for R2 and R4. My input voltages are the voltage here at B is going to this resistor, the voltage at A is going to this resistor. I'm tying this node to ground, this is the non inverting input terminal, and then I'm feeding back from the output to the inverting input terminal. I've applied power to my operational amplifier. This is my negative voltage. This is my positive voltage. I'm providing plus and minus 9 volts to this. Now let's look at the change in output voltage relative to a change in deflection of the strain gauge. At the moment, my beam is in its undeflected position. I've rebalanced my Wheatstone bridge so that I'm getting something slightly less than 50 millivolts output in, a, in an undeflected state, about 30 millivolts. I'm probably not going to get any closer to zero than that. So now, if I deflect this all the way down, I get about 0.4 volts. So I'm getting roughly a half a volt change for a downward deflection. If I deflect it up, I get a negative 0.6 volts, so I'm getting about a negative half a volt change for deflecting it up. I've converted my 50 millivolt change into about a half a volt change. That concludes our background lecture for lab assignment number five. As I mentioned at the beginning, what I have demonstrated is a strain measurement system. If you're doing a temperature measurement system, the overall de design approach is identical to what I've done here.